TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem. And in today's top stories, Syria accuses Israel of bombing targets southwest of Damascus City. Israel's defense establishment is preparing for a possible Iranian assault by means of unmanned aerial systems. A Turkish delegation visits both Jerusalem and Ramallah as part of Ankara's bid to normalize its relations with the State of Israel. Surface-to-surface -surface missiles were reportedly launched from Israel towards the Syrian town of Zakaya, situated southwest of the capital Damascus. According to Syrian sources, an Israeli aircraft was spotted over Lebanese airspace for a brief period of time last night before retorting to Israeli airspace. Subsequently, a number of minutes after 11.30 p.m., a number of surface-to-surface -surface missiles penetrated Syrian airspace from the direction of the Golan Heights, which according to the regime-run Sana News Agency, citing a military source, targeted some points in the vicinity of Zakaya town south of Damascus, causing some material damage. It is important to note that Syria's aerial defense array was not activated, nor were there any immediate reports of casualties. And while Damascus pointed a blaming finger at Jerusalem, the IDF spokesperson's unit did not confirm nor deny its alleged responsibility in response to TV7's request for comment. In related news, Israel's defense establishment is reportedly preparing for a possible Iranian assault by means of unmanned aerial systems. According to a report by Israel's Khan State Radio, several days ago, American forces operating in Iraq downed two unmanned aerial aircrafts, which security sources in Israel ascertained may have been headed for Israel and were intended to explode in Israeli territory. And while Israel is operating tirelessly to thwart Iranian efforts to transfer advanced weaponry, including precision-guided munitions to its proxies in Syria and Lebanon, Hezbollah Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah boastfully proclaimed that Israel had failed in its so-called campaign between the wars. بدي اقول للاسرائيلي معركتك بين حروب ادت الى نتائج ممتازه لنا وانت الخسران انت مش ربحان بالعكس شو تحويل التهديد الى فرصه ما يلي اول نقطه انا استطيع اليوم ان اعلن انه منذ سنوات مش هلا نتيجه انه هذا نحن نواجه تهديد نقل الصواريخ الدقيقه الى لبنان طيب بالتعاون مع اخواننا وعندنا أذكياء وعندنا تقنيين وعندنا ناس متخصصين وبالتعاون أيضا مع الخبراء في الجمهورية الإسلامية نحن أصبح لدينا قدرة على تحويل صواريخنا الموجودة بالآلاف على تحويل صواريخنا إلى صواريخ دقيقة وبدأنا ذلك منذ سنوات وحولنا عدد كبير من صواريخنا إلى صواريخ دقيقة ومش محتاجين ننقل من إيران مثل ما نحن ملكنا القدرة التكنولوجية على تحويل صواريخنا إلى صواريخ دقيقة نحن اليوم في لبنان ومنذ مدة طويلة بدأنا بتصنيع المسيرات والبدو يشتري يقدم طلب The Hezbollah Secretary General spoke to his supporters via live feed from an undisclosed location for fear of his life Meanwhile, in Jerusalem, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett hosted U.S. House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi this morning, during which he stressed the warm ties between Israel and the United States and the importance of bipartisan support for Israel. Prime Minister Bennett also thanked Speaker Pelosi for her support in advancing U.S. funding for the Iron Dome aerial defense system and emphasized the importance of completing the process, which is currently held up at the Senate, as soon as possible. Furthermore, among the topics discussed at the meeting were the main strategic challenges facing the State of Israel, especially the Iranian nuclear issue. It is important to note that while U.S. House of Representatives Speaker headed a partisan Democrat delegation to Israel, a group of almost 200 Republican House representatives have sent a letter to U.S. President Joe Biden warning him that a revival of the 2015 nuclear deal with Iran without congressional approval 
will meet the same fate as the previous agreement, which was abandoned by the Trump administration. The U.S. lawmakers further stressed in their letter that while the Islamic Republic demands a guarantee that U.S. sanctions will never be reimposed so long as they comply with the terms of an agreement regarding their illicit nuclear program, the Biden administration does not have the power to provide such guarantee. Aware of the aforementioned fact, Iran is evidently demanding guarantees that do not necessarily relate to future U.S. executive decisions apparently demanding possible benefits to be held within Iranian territory. Yes, for Iran, the verification process is very important because it, the Americans and the Europeans must show that in action, in reality, they are implementing the nuclear deal. Mm -hmm. Because in 2015, on paper, they said they'll do it, but in reality, they didn't. So this time round, just like there's a verification process for Iran, the International Atomic Energy Agency does it, there must be a verification process for Western countries to implement the nuclear deal. With regards to guarantees, Iran has to have guarantees in one form or another. If the guarantees cannot be given by Western countries, then the Iranians must have those guarantees inside Iran. Marandi went on to accuse the West of dragging their feet. We could have already had an agreement, but they keep dragging their feet, and they hope, they're hoping that Iran will give up. But they see that Iran is insistent mm -hmm. on, on its rights. So gradually they're becoming more realistic, but they still have important steps to take. According to a report by the London-based Reuters news agency citing an Iranian official, Tehran has demanded the removal of some 300 sanctions on Iranian entities and individuals which are not related to the nuclear program. And while the U.S. has repeatedly stated that Iran's nuclear progress may render the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action obsolete in a matter of weeks, French Foreign Minister Jean-Yves Le Drian has altered the equation by telling lawmakers in Paris that it is not a matter of weeks, but rather, it is a matter of days. Asked about these remarks and whether the United States views Iran's attitude in Vienna as serious, U.S. State Department spokesman Ned Price said that the next several days would clarify whether an agreement remains viable while further urging the Islamic Republic to engage directly. I think uh, we'll, have a, we'll have a much better sense of that. Uh, in the coming days, and it will uh, have to be in the coming days because, again, uh, we're in a decisive period where um, all sides uh, will have to make the political commitments uh, that will be necessary if we are to achieve a mutual return to compliance with the JCPOA. Uh, we believe that direct talks uh, between the United States uh, and Tehran uh, and Iran uh, would be in our interest uh, in the context of Vienna. As you know, Francesco, we have had to operate on an indirect uh, basis with our uh, primarily our European partners relaying messages uh, back and forth. Um, and that is, has posed an obstacle uh, in the context of negotiations that are technical, that are detailed, uh, that are uh, complex. Uh, and so we have said for some time now uh, that we would find direct negotiations in the context of Vienna uh, to be to our advantage. It would be to the benefit uh, of our attempts to seek to achieve or at least test the proposition of whether uh, we can achieve a mutual return to compliance with the JCPOA. Turning back to Israel, where a Turkish delegation that includes Deputy Foreign Minister Sedat Onal and Presidential Chief Advisor Ibrahim Kalin visited Jerusalem and the West Bank city of Ramallah earlier today as Ankara seeks to mend its differences with Jerusalem. Upon arrival at the Turkish consulate in East Jerusalem, Kalin highlighted Turkey's aspiration to normalize its relations with Israel. Bugün burada hem Filistin hem de İsrail yetkililerle görüşmek üzere Dışişleri Bakan Yardımcımız Sedat Bey ile bir ziyaret gerçekleştiriyoruz. Burada hem Filistin meselesinin çözümüne yönelik atılabilecek adımlar hem Türkiye-İsrail ilişkilerinin normalleştirilmesi yönünde the advisor to the Turkish president further noted that in talks with Israeli officials, a planned visit by Israeli President Itzhak Herzog scheduled for next month will be discussed. Thank you for joining us. I would like to start by asking, since TV7 is a donation-based organization, 
If you are blessed by TV7 Israel News or any of our other productions, please consider making a contribution, which in turn will allow us to both sustain and develop the quality of our programs. And as part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to also encourage you to persist in lifting up both Ukraine and Russia in prayer for the people's salvation and peace, alongside prayers for persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our ongoing prayers for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. Separately, I would like to remind you that tomorrow evening, TV7 will broadcast our monthly Powers in Play panel hosted by our editor-at-large, Amir Oren. Therefore, TV7 Israel News will resume broadcast next week on Monday. I'm Yair Pinto, wishing you a Shabbat Shalom and we will see you again on Monday at the same time.